So start by a simple outline and don't worry if you can't draw freehand, I provide you with something to trace down and I'll tell you later how you can obtain them. All of the materials that I'm going to be using in today's tutorial I will list in the description box below but we're all about breaking the watercolour rules with this tutorial. Um, I'm a great advocate of using the materials that you have and just to make life a little bit easier. But in any event, to start with, I'm going to be mixing these two gorgeous colours here. Um, these colours are from Schmincke. They are quinacridone magenta and quinacridone purple. And I'm just applying them with a large round brush like this directly onto my rough surface paper. This kind of paper is really great for mixed media work because it means that you can really build up your colors. So if you have something that's a little bit rugged and a little bit robust, then I highly recommend that you get used to using it with watercolor as well as mixed media. So give this a go. Now, as you can see, I have a color chart here that I've swatched out my colors and I use this to match my colors up. If you'd like to know how to make a similar chart, I'll link it on the top of your screen so that you can click through. Once I have got that first base colour in place and I'm waiting for it to dry, I mix a yellow tone and a blue tone to create these lovely, beautiful green washes. Now remember, watercolour is all about building up your layers, but we're not going to be too fussy today because we are going to be cheating a little bit later on. So if you struggle with watercolour, then do consider just watching this video all the way through so you can find out my little tricks and hacks to help you create a beautiful watercolour painting. I'm mixing a little bit more blue to this green mix so that I have this kind of muted green tone on the leaves here. If you want to have access to the outline and the reference photograph, I'll put them at the end of this video as well as in our Facebook group, which I will link in the description box underneath. Everything is completely dry at this point, so I go in with round two of my paint. Now this is the way that you would ordinarily apply watercolour paint by making sure that each layer is dry before you apply the next. You can see here how I'm adding the paint directly onto the paper once again with my number four pointed round brush. You can, of course, use any materials that you want that you have within your own set. I'm all about using what you have within your own kit. You can see how I'm applying the paint onto this existing wash by layering them up without the paint going muddy. You'll notice at this point that I haven't retained any of my lighter areas. Some people really struggle with watercolour by keeping their lighter areas light. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the cheats way on how to do it. We are using a limited palette of colours today. This helps create a really cohesive painting. And by starting with these lighter washes, it does mean that you can build up your colours and really get used to your watercolour paints that you have within your own set. Now, if you are struggling with matching up your colours in this tutorial, please let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to help you with the colours that you have within your own kit. You can see that I'm cleaning my brush in my clean water, patting it dry and blending it out. Now we need to build up the greens a little bit more. So going back in with the two colors that I've used before. And like I said, all the colors I will list in the description box underneath. So you don't have to worry about catching what I'm saying as I work through the tutorial. With that light wash in place, I can now go over and add the darker colors here and there. This means that I already know where I'm going with my blue tones and my green tones and what have you. So this means that I can go on now a little bit more a little bit more robustly with those colours and blend them in with my brush like this. Brushes that I'm using here are Snowdrop Browns, they are from Rosemary & Co and I've added a tiny bit more yellow here to that blue mix so that I can really change up the greens that I'm using. The paper that I'm using today is a 300 GSM rough paper. Mine is from Arches, but please use whichever that you have, but it does need to be a strong cotton paper for this tutorial. Otherwise, what will happen is your paints will just lift off. It doesn't have to be the best quality. It does have to be strong. A brand that I recommend um, if you don't want to fork out and buy Arches or um, Saunders Waterford, Etcher do a really, really good quality cold press paper that works just as well as this. And once again, I will link it in the description box underneath if you want to check it out. 
blending in this color you can see by layering the watercolor that you can still see that beautiful color underneath this is the beauty of watercolor but like I said we're all about cheating a little bit in this tutorial so if you do struggle with watercolor then stick around and you can watch how this magic process unfolds and remember by using the art supplies that you have on hand it's a great way to explore your creativity and make art without spending a lot of money it can also help you to become more resourceful and think outside the box when it comes to creating your art additionally using what you have within your own kit can help you develop a unique style and a voice as an artist building up those layers and you can see the difference between the green tones and the the, blue, the bluey tinge that I have here with a little bit more of that blue and now I'm going in with my number two pointed round just adding more blue to create this little shadow underneath the fold here. Now this time I haven't put the reference photograph in screen simply because I'm just using it as a kind of guide as to where I'm going but you can access that reference photograph right at the end of this video. You can also have it over on our Facebook group where you can post all your finished paintings and your works in progress to have some feedback from me and our other incredible members. It's a great way of learning how to paint when you're seeing people's works in progress because I know it can be off-putting when you're practicing yourself and you think it just looks wrong. But by seeing other people's work, you'll know it's not the case. Now at this point, you might be forgiven in thinking this looks really flat and you'd be right. We need to add some tonal values. So here is where the trick comes in. I am using these Neocolor 2 water-soluble crayons to add some tonal values values. First off, black and white. Now again, we're kind of breaking the watercolour rules here by adding white and black to our painting. And I know watercolour purists will probably not like this idea at all, but we're all about having fun here on the channel. The paint must be really, really dry before you do this, otherwise this will stick to the paper. So it's really important that when you apply your pastel like this, that your paper is absolutely dry. Having used a light touch to apply this white tone, I'm now activating the pigment with my brush. Now, if you haven't tried these Neo Color 2 um, Aquarel, I think you call them crayons um, before, I urge you to do so. They are really inexpensive and I bought mine from Jackson's, which I will list underneath. But you can see that they have this kind of really creamy quality. You can use them on their own or of course you can use them in the way that I'm doing here to layer up your watercolour painting. They are incredibly creamy and such a surprise to use. If you've never used them before, give them a go because you can see me here just adding light touches and they are very, very buildable. And just by activating that pigment with your brush, you can really start to put some shape and form into your painting. Now I'm going to carry on this process, layering this color up bit by bit to create different highlights and different shades as I work through and you just activate that pigment with your brush. Now if you like this method of painting where you're using mixed media to create your lighter highlights rather than retain them in the way that you would with watercolour, I have another video here where I've used ink tents instead of these crayons to do the similar thing and I will link it on the top of your screen so that you can click through and take a look at that as well. Using a really light touch and applying that crayon and just adding it like this. You can see that by using a light touch and a damp brush, that colour blends so easily into that watercolour paint, creating these little highlights that you would have otherwise lost. This is my number two pointed round. This is from the Snowdrop range at Rosemary Co. And I do apologise for that fly flying into shot there. Again, just building up these colours, but you must make sure that the paper is dry before you rebuild your paint. So have you ever tried using a different medium with watercolour paint before? If you have, let me know in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? How did you get on with it? I'm always interested to find out how you like using your, your paints in different ways. I know that somebody recently over on our Facebook group mentioned that they had used ink tents with watercolour and it really made me think what a great way it is to use your paints. So once again, you can see I'm adding this white paint. Don't be frightened if it looks too dark because you can always blend it out with your brush because they are very water soluble and that's one of the joys of using water soluble mediums. Just continuing to blend in that colour and build up that light tone until you're happy with it. 
If you are enjoying this video, could I ask you to give me a big thumbs up? It's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it would really help to support me. You may also want to consider subscribing to my channel by hitting that subscribe button and the little bell on the side. That way you'll be notified every time I upload videos every week. Now at this point I'm adding a little bit of black, another controversial colour to use when using watercolour because I know that it's very often frowned upon. Now at this point I think I had gone in a little heavy handed but I keep going and blending out that black paint to create the depth of colour. If you do enjoy painting botanicals and you really want to level up on your painting, you may want to consider joining our Patreon where we have exclusive content that isn't over here on YouTube. So let's just take a look. Over on Patreon, we have exclusive contents just for our patrons and every month we release brand new botanical paintings. We have three different membership levels, including a mentorship and coaching level so that you can really level up your watercolour painting. I will link it in the description below in case you're interested in joining us there. So we have new content every single month, so do take a look at our Patreon, including our new mentorship and coaching level, so that you can really start to learn uh, painting botanicals um, and really level up your painting. Okay, at this point I decided to add a tiny bit of vermilion to the colour. Again, this is everything's completely dry and I'm going over the lighter areas in that white paint again. You can see here that by adding that vermilion tone, it really gives this tulip another level. You can see how by glazing over the colour and then going over once again with that white colour, you can, you can keep adding those colours and building them up without any trouble at all. You can see some of the tooth of the paper here, but don't worry, you can keep blending it until you get rid of those bumpy edges. But by glazing over with that vermilion colour, it really lifted that dark colour up a little bit and gave it that beautiful soft glaze. I'll continue blending the colours in this way until I'm happy with the light colour that I've achieved. Going over again with a little bit of black because I did feel I didn't blend it out quite enough before, so just by building and building up these colours I can continue to get the level that I need. At this point I just create, um, I just dip my brush in the water that I have on my palette here just to blend those colours together. By adding this tiny bit of water on my palette it means I can really merge those colours by using a really light touch with just a smidgen of water to blend them together. And if you like painting tulips, I have another tutorial here where I've painted with gouache. Perhaps you want to try this medium and once again, I will link it on the top of your screen. Using the te technique that I used earlier, I'm picking up that white paint from the uh, pencil, from the pe pastel itself and going up now and creating some shapes on the tulip. The bottom of the tulip needed lifting up a little bit, so I'm adding a bit more of that white pigment here. just adding a little bit of detail and blending it out as before. Now at this point I did feel that the the leaves were sort of dangling there a little bit and so I added a little bit more black before adding more of the original colours that I mixed with that yellow and the blue tone. Mixing your own green tones um, is a lovely thing to do because you can vary that colour really really dramatically just by using the two colours. Once I've applied that dark colour with the black I'm going over to add a bit of detail as you can see here on the flower head itself by using it straight from the bullet of the crayon and then I will mix the two colours for the greens again and go over the leaves as I have done before. We've still got a, f a little bit to go on this tutorial but at this point I'm going to stop talking and let you listen to some music in peace while I paint the rest of this tulip. Remember to stay right until the end of this video where you can screenshot the outline and the photograph if you want to trace it down and um, you can also see the finished painting. Could I ask you once again to give a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss new uploads. We upload every single week and everything is free. Once again thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.